but what has been shown to be an advantage when we compare, when we compare non-penetrating with or without the implant. So I believe that you know the fugal blade has really almost virtually eliminated the issue of surgical technique and difficulty in performing the procedure. Uh, I think that you know those of us that do non-penetrating are very enamored by it because we see the results that we're getting with very little uh, of the complications that we see as far as the devastating complications that we uh, find in trabeculectomy. I think I've shown you though that you know the procedure can be done fairly reproducible. See again how the wick maintains that space there. These blebs are different than our trabeculectomy blebs again for reasons I've stated earlier. Even with mitomycin C it's extremely uncommon to find a cystic bleb because of that flow rate, the nature of the flow, and the diffuseness of the flow. We've uh, now we've started we started performing the procedure in the in fall. We have now over 20 patients uh, that we perform. Anybody who does glaucoma surgery knows, of course, that really we're looking at long-term follow-up. Uh, these patients have done really quite consistent with what we found with our standard non-penetrating approach, but our surgical time certainly has reduced, as well as the predictability. Now it's also important to remember to recognize a syndrome or a, a phenomenon that can occur which is late onset or, or mid onset fibrosis of the trabecular mesh of the trabecular decimate membrane. This is a dissection as you saw it earlier but from the other viewpoint. You can actually see the aquifer still intact here and it's pressing slightly down on that membrane which is what we create with the fugal blade. If need be we can use a laser, a YAG laser, to laser through that fibrotic tissue that sometimes can develop from pigments or other materials to re-enhance the uh, flow should the pressure go up close operatively. And there's been a number of studies showing the advantage and the efficacy of doing that, uh, even as late as three or four years after surgery. So this is something that should be used before going to meds, for example, if, uh, if that was the case. These are Visanti images of, again, uh, a very similar patient with the fugal dissection here. You can see this patient is actually a couple of years post-operative. You can see actually a well-formed intraskeletal lake, as you saw how we created that. This is the intact membrane that we left. And you can see it's a bit thicker. So post, after the laser anatomy was done, we have a release now, and we have reestablishing a flow into the intrasteral lake. And from there, we have flow going through numerous methods, including supercoroidal subconj and other routes. So an example here showing that goniopuncture. It is important to remember uh, the use of goniopuncture. So what we found, and this is basically quite um, evident from the body of literature in terms of what are our targets. If we're looking for targets that are 16, 17 millimeters of mercury, then we can do a viscocanalostomy or just a straight gastrectomy without an implant. And again, both these procedures can be done with, a, with, the, with the fugal blade. If we want to get a bit lower, we need to use an implant or we'll go to trabeculectomy. It's very hard to predictively, to, predict, to, predictively, to predict, predictively get down, sorry, to a level below 12, oh, the tongue twister, to a level below 12 without using modomycin in, in my patient population that are on multiple meds, they may have had previous surgery. And so whether we use a trabeculectomy or an implant, gastrectomy, we can achieve these pressures. The difference is, of course, the safety profile. And, and that's a big issue when we use mitomycin C and we do trabeculectomy is concerns uh, for excessive flow uh, and uh, hypotenuse complications. So again, the biggest advantages are that low flow, diffuse flow, that first off, post-op stability, the re rapid recovery of uh, vision and improved morphology. Uh, I think that one of the biggest hurdles we've had, because non penetrating has been around for some time, has really been you know, the issue of the technique. How can we reliably do this in a controlled fashion? And I've been very impressed. In fact, it's, it's often hard for my fellows to do a standard non-penetrating technique because we're so, we like to go and grab the fugal blade before, uh, before using any other instruments because of how, more, how much more efficient and less time consuming the fugal blade is. And we're continuing to do ongoing studies comparing um, the fugal procedure with, with non-penetrating versus trap and versus the standard uh, incisional uh, dissection with a knife with deep spectrum and implant. Well, thank you for your attention. <laughs> we have enough community close patients, but uh, really nothing of significance at all. Uh, it, it, I mean, again, when you do non-penetrating, you really see when they go well, they go very well. The problems are when you don't have an adequate dissection, or when you go through the dissection and you have, you know, uh, patent, uh, you know, full thickness opening. But no, it's really, uh, you know, the, the only thing I'd be worried about would be going through with the blade, and that's why go to lower, go to lower energies. Uh, and just be very, you know, just be very gentle as you go past. Well, once we see some percolation, then that's like I said, a protective medium so you won't go through that. So just want to make sure you go with gentle pressure. And you know, I, I would advise going back a bit on the spinal dissection. It won't harm you at all to go down over the choroid and do it over the core, so you get a feel for how thick the sclera is, and then go a bit forward. And that may actually enhance supercoroidal flow if you get down to the choroid as well. So that's one of the things I think are, are tips to use a fugal blade.
uh, you don't normally cannulate the Schlem's Canal with your standard service. Yeah, the question was whether you cannulate the canal for viscocanalostomy or modification of that. I, I usually don't. Have you um, tried with this, though, to see? I mean, is it still the same anatom? I mean, does it change that? I, I think with, with, with this, because you're not actually stripping the membrane and you're not actually leaving the cut ends of, oste of the ostea of the Schlem's right. Canal open, it might be hard to cannulate, although we have seen it in our dissections. Uh, personally, I, I don't think a lot of aqueous goes through that. Right. Uh, in, the, in this procedure, so I'm not really that. Uh, my routine procedure, I don't do it anyway. So. I um, I did some initially, yes, um, but I, I I really I really found the aquifer made a difference, to be honest with you. Um, there hasn't been a lot of work in that area. There's been work with non mycin procedures showing the difference. And, you know, in our, in our data, I think we did find the difference in terms of the aquifer. Maintaining that, that intraskeletal lake so it doesn't collapse, I think, is important with the procedure. And the mitomycin won't necessarily prevent that. It can, it can deal with some of the wound healing issues, but not necessarily the collapse of that, of that lake. And if you collapse that, that conduit, then, of course, you're not going to have any flow. Do you, uh, can it coagulate? I mean, sometimes when you're working in that area, like, you get yeah, like, little perforators, I mean... It's great for that. It's great for basically uh, essentially ablating uh, and, and clotting the, uh, the uh, vascular tissue around. So, you know, the procedures that we do, we really don't really need to do cautery. Simply just using the, uh, the blade and really it takes care of the vessels quite nicely. Probably use it just as many times for my complicated cataract or, or my uh, difficult cataract procedures uh, uh, for those purposes. Have you done any transcellular Yes, I have done some transcellular filtration. Um, I think Dawes, you probably has will be able to tell you much more about that. Uh, I, I found in my hands, I'm, I'm really happy with the non penetrating approach using the aqua flow, so I've generally shaded toward that. Um, you know, in, in terms of my, my population, uh, I think Dawes has uh, obviously a large population that he can probably share from the uh, TCF. But uh, I mean, I, I, you know, certainly for some of those patients that are at high risk for shallow chambers, because even with the with this procedure, you've got flow coming to the anterior chamber, so you can get you know malignant glaucoma, you can get you know uh, posterior pushing mechanisms. You know, if you can go through the posterior chamber and com communicate through that, uh, that will be a huge bonus. What I've done, Dalji, honestly, is that, I don't know if you've done the same thing, but is actually modify this by doing a flap. One of the concerns I have is the conjunctiva sticking down into the crater. So I do a little flap, like, like I do, and I, do a, I put an aquaflow there, too, to hold open that crater. So that way, I think there's two potential issues. One is internal occlusion, one is, you know, the conch coming in and closing it up. And the original non-penetrating procedures actually were just the section down to Sam's canal and close the conge over it. Well, they failed because the conge is scarred over it. So I think the scleral flap may have some advantages, and the aqua flow or some sort of spacer uh, will be perhaps an ultimate marriage on that. So that's something that we're going to play around with. So. Do you use any mitomycin on those? Uh, again, depending on the risk factors. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're still getting subconscious flow, and uh, uh, again, depending on the patient population, it's an issue. I mean, I, Dalji, no, I, I told you with Dalji's points about mitomycin and the harmful effect on the lymphatics. So we're aware of that, but, but we have this big conflict as far as. Um, healing, wound healing. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for your attention.